The Australian Open done and dusted for 2024. We had some major changes to the tennis landscape. We also had some changes to the rankings and most importantly to the points. Let's go over see who won last week. So starting on the women's side, Arena Sabalenka, of course, winning her second straight Australian Open, taking out Zhang in the final, 6-3, 6-2, in a pretty straightforward final. And then on the men's side, Yannick Sinner coming back from two sets of love down to take out Daniel Medvedev in the final, 3-6, 3-6, 6-4, 6-4, 6-3 to lift the biggest trophy of his career so far. So a repeat champion on the women's side, a new champion on the men's side, and some big points changes to all those involved in the finals. But let's start with the players outside the top 10 and Yastremska, who made it through the qualifiers all the way to the semifinals. She went up 39 spots, number 29 in the world. Noskova, after making a quarterfinal in Australia, she goes up 64 spots to a career high 30 in the world. And Kazo, the French wild card, he's into the top 100 for the first time at a career high number 83 in the world, 20 spots higher than last week. So some players that had some really good runs, getting career high rankings and boost up the ranking. Couple of players that went down to the rankings, Lynette. She went down 32 spots to number 56 after losing all the points from last year's semi-final at the Australian Open. Carolina Pliskova, she goes down 39 spots to 77 in the world, also losing a lot of points. And Rafa Nadal, after pulling out of the Australian Open, the little points that he had from a second round have come off and he's dropped down 202 spots to 648 in the world. Of course, we're hoping we see Rafa back pretty soon, but we'll have to keep using that protected ranking if he's gonna enter tournaments in the future. All right, let's start on the women's side of things now and no change up the top with Igor Sviantec staying at world number one. Arena Sabalenka, despite winning the Australian Open, stays at number two. We have a little bit of a change in the middle with Rabakina going down to number five after losing all the points from the final she made last year, allowing Goff and Pagula to both got one spot each, and especially Goff getting a lot of points from that semi-final appearance. Jabur, she stayed in the middle there at number six, but we have a new player in the top 10 with Zhang going up eight spots to a career high number seven in the world, pushing Von Drusova, Sakri, Mukova, and Ostapenko, who fell out of the top 10 completely after dropping points from last year's Australian Open. So no major changes, the only big one being Zhang getting into the top 10 after making the final, but the battle between Sviantec and Sabalenka up the top there there, the points there are really going to be crucial over the next couple of weeks and next couple of months especially because of course Fiontek on the clay was really really good and Sabalenka to be fair was really good on the hard court so she also has points to defend to try and keep up with Fiontek. Having got the race to the finals for the first time in 2024 now that we've got four weeks worth of points we actually have a little bit of something to talk about. Sabalenka she comes in at number one after winning the Australian Open and also getting to a final beforehand. Zhang she'll be number two at the moment with Goff coming in at three. You Stremsker at four, Ostapenko at five. Remember, she did win a tournament before the Australian Open in Adelaide. Rybakina, after winning Brisbane and getting some points at the Australian Open, she goes at six. Sviontek at seven, after playing really well for Poland at the start of the year in the United Cup. Noskova at eight, Kostruk at nine, and Kalin Sky rounds up the top 10 for the race of the finals. Of course, this will not be what it looks like in maybe even a month or two. It's going to be changing. We're going to see some familiar names, of course. Sabalenka's probably going to be there. Sviontek, Rybakina, Goff, but... It could really change over the next couple of months, but this is what it looks like after the first month of the season, and we'll keep updating this as we go. Going over to the men's rankings now, and no change up the top. Despite Djokovic losing in the semifinals and losing a bunch of points, he stays at number one with Alcaraz at number two, but the gap is closing between those two. Only 600 points between those. Of course, they're playing over the next few weeks, so we'll keep an eye on them. Medvedev, he stays at three with Sinner at four. Rublev, who is at five, he stays there with Zverev at six. But we do have a change on the bottom with Tsitsipas dropping three spots down to number 10 in the world, allowing Runa, Herkatch, and Fritz to all overtake him. And that's, of course, because he lost 1,000 points from last year. And Herkatch at number eight there, he actually is a career high ranking. So after making the quarterfinals in Australia, he gets a boost. And Alex Dumanor unfortunately, falls out of the top 10 completely. But it's getting really interesting how different it is with the top four guys compared to the rest. You can see there, Sinner's on 8,300 points. Rublev's at 5,000 points. That's a massive difference. Remember, a slam is worth 2,000. So Rublev is going to have to win a slam and then some if he's going to be in that conversation with those big four guys. But they're the four guys that have been the best over the last 12 months, and that's why they are so far ahead of everybody else. All right, over to the race of the finals now. And again, the first real time we can look at this because we've got a lot of points that have been given out already. Sinner, no surprise there. He is number one now with Medvedev coming in at two. Zverev is at number three after having a really good United Cup with Djokovic at number four. Rublev at five. Herkatch at six. Dimitar will come in at number seven with Fritz at eight. Elkris at nine. And Tabillo. He sneaks into the top 10, which is really random, considering, you know, Dimitrov and guys like Runa have done really well to start the year. He's the one who ends up in the top 10 on the first look at the race of the finals. So 
A lot of familiar names there. A lot of players we expect to be in Turin. But Davillo, he gets a little bit of a cameo to start the season. Of course, this is going to change over the next few months. But shout out to Davillo for getting into the top 10 for the first time. So there you have it. That is the rankings for this week. And obviously, massive changes once we get the Australian Open out the way. And some really interesting changes. Not so much to the players at the top, but the points. It's really starting to get tied up the top, especially with those top four guys. Sinner is now in the Grand Slam club, and it's funny because the top four guys are all Grand Slam winners. Djokovic, Alcaraz, Medvedev, Sinner. And then on the women's side, you know, Sabalenka, Sriantec. They're going to be battling it out for that top spot as well, with Goff at number three, not far behind. Let me know down in the comments below. What's been the biggest shock for you in the rankings this week? What has been the biggest surprise? And also, what has been the moment for you of the Australian Open? Was it Sinner winning? Was it Sabalenka winning back-to-back? -back? Was it Zhang making the final? Or was it something else? Very big tournament, a big change, it feels like, after this Australian Open with some random results and also some big changes of the rankings as well.